Well, are you guys ready to see that diagnosis? I'm afraid it's bad news. So, here it is. It's not outrageous, but crankcase is cracked. That's why there was a bit of oil leaking down. Sometimes you can JB weld a crankcase like here and salvage it. That's possible, but most shops will not do that for you. And if you JB weld it for a customer and it ends up leaking again, they're going to expect you to take it all apart again and fix it for free or to give them a new block. So most mechanics don't bother with that headache unless they're fixing it for themselves. Now I'll take the sump cover off and show you guys what the damage is in there. So I'm going to start by removing the rest of the electric starter. I'm going to remove the switch on top of the cover. There's just two Phillips screws you need to remove. Now I'm going to remove the fuel tank by removing the two bolts here. Going to remove the fuel line. Now I'm going to remove the engine pulley by having a pipe wrench lock the shaft and a 916 socket. Now I'm going to remove the governor arm by loosening the bolt right here, which is a 516. Now just go underneath with a flat screwdriver and pry the whole thing up. Now you can leave the arm aside. Remember that if you do put it back together that this is the configuration of the linkages. Now at this point what you'll need to do is remove all the 3 8 bolt that hold the sum cover on. Now there's a bolt behind the dipstick tube, so we need to remove the clip from the tube. Just spread it out like that, remove it. And the tube here simply unscrews out of the cover. So now I've got all the bolts off, I'm going to start to remove the cover now. In the upper left corner over here, you can insert a small screwdriver here, but don't go deep so you don't damage the gasket area. Twist your screwdriver like that, it's going to get the cover to start coming off. Now as you can see it's starting to come off all around. It doesn't usually come off this easy if it's an older engine, this is fairly new so it's a bit easier. Once the gasket's not holding it on anymore, you can just pull the whole cover off. So there's the bottom of the connecting rod down in the bottom of the engine right there. Now I'm going to remove the camshaft and before I do that I want to show you guys the timing marks that you use when you reinstall the engine back together. It's right here and there's a small mark on the crankshaft right here. So again here's the little mark I'm talking about. It's right here. Sometimes you're covered in oil so you have to clean it off. And there's the mark here. If you were to rebuild this engine and you put it back together you want to line up the marks. So all you need to do is line them up like this together and your engine's properly timed. Now I'm going to remove the camshaft. And here's the camshaft. It still looks good. Here's that automatic decompressor. What it does is it just nicks one of the valves open so that it's easier to start. That's why it's hard to get a compression reading on these four cycle engines. There's still a bit of oil in the bottom of the sump there. So here are the parts I got out. These are the valve lifters here. They're still good. And there's the pieces from the connecting rod. What I'm going to do now is remove the head so I can remove the piston and show you the rod. I'm going to start by removing the cowling. Remove these bolts here. There's one down here and on the other side over there and they're all half inch bolts. And the last bolt is on this side where the starter used to go. Now 
Now you'll need to disconnect the primer line down here. Just pull on it from the carb. Don't worry if it breaks there. When you put it back on, you just snip it and put it back in. And now just pull on the cowling. Now simply remove the linkage from here. And you also need to disconnect this green wire here that goes up to the ignition module or the coil right here. Now you've got your whole cowling off. Now I'm going to remove the muffler. First you want to bend back the little metal tabs here. Just use an old flat screwdriver and bend them out. And these are half inch bolts. Now just remove the 3 8 bolt here, that holds the muffler as well. This cover is going to come off. So now to get the head off, you want to remove all the bolts here, they're all half inch. They all need to come off. And I'm going to use an impact wrench, it's much quicker. Once all the bolts are completely loosened off, if the head is stuck on, just grab a screwdriver, go near the edges here, and twist it. It's going to pop the head off the gasket. As you can see, when I turn the crankshaft, nothing's moving, so the piston's stuck there. But I'm going to pull it out through this side here. I'm just going to reach in and push on the rod. There it is. What happens sometimes when you blow a rod is it can damage the sides of the piston but this one looks pretty good so the piston and rings are still good but there's the rod is just completely sheared off you can tell it got pretty hot there because there's some dark marks now here's a view of inside the cylinder it's smooth there's no grooves or scratches caused by that incident it's a shame when something like that happens the blower wasn't too old and I priced out a block for that. The last quote I got was three seventy nine plus tax. That's crazy. You might as well get another engine for that price, or just another blower. And the list price for the rod is around fifty bucks. So this diagnosis shows again the importance of not over revving your engine. So thanks again for watching. Hopefully this won't happen to your engine. If it has and you videotaped it you can post it as a video response to this video here. Everybody's always interested in seeing the diagnosis of a blown connecting rod on a Tecumseh engine. See you next time.